Hey everyone, it's Blue Loser Jello, and welcome back to another episode of Everything Possible here in Dark Souls 2. And today we pick up exactly where we left off at the end of the last episode, the Executioner Chariots boss fight. Now this boss fight is about as straightforward as it comes for Dark Souls 2. We have two different sets of skeleton warriors trying to kill us, we have two different necromancers trying to keep them alive, and we have an inflamed chariot going around in circles trying to run us down. It might not be as straightforward as I originally thought. The goal here is to take up the chariot after we kill the other enemies. At least that's my goal. So what I like to do is, first off, hide in these alcoves anytime the chariot goes by. But you want to rush to the necromancers as fast as you can and take them out because if you don't, they will just continue to resurrect the skeletons. So I've already taken the one out which was standing right here. And with the mace, three hits is all it takes. And next we will start making our way to the next one. Now you can knock these down temporarily, but as soon as the Necromancer casts his spell, these skeletons are going to get up again. With the chariot, you can roll under the chariot spikes on the side of the wheels. However, the timing is very precise. Since I am still working with base level stats in most of my areas, my rolling does not have as many invincibility frames as it could. So I choose to opt for hiding in the alcoves. There's a blood stain from someone else, clearly not me. And there is proof of concept that you can roll under those spikes. Take out this second necro. Now if you're looking to farm any of the necromancer stuff, you can actually do it here. As long as you don't kill the boss, the necromancers will continue to respawn. So if you kill them and you don't get the drop you want, you could homeward bone out and then try again. They could drop the the Black Hollow Mage Robe, the Hood, the Lizard Staff, as well as Amber Herbs. But now that the Necros are dead, now we just need to take care of the other skeletons. Which it appeared that we had. And then we'll pull this lever to drop down the gate, and then we can actually begin the real boss fight. Now, I've already picked up some items, but all of the items, except for the one at the very end, are just fading souls. So, they're 50 souls apiece. If you want to skip them, I won't tell anyone. Now, I like to fight this guy from range. I like to fight most guys at range when I am rocking a sorcerer or a hex build. But he does do a charge attack, and you want to dodge to the left or the right, right at the last second. But he also has his dark cloud attack that you'll see here in just a moment. As long as you're out of range, you should still be able to target him while he can't hit you with it. One more shot will do it. And that's the Executioner Chariot. Grab ourselves his soul, some more fading souls. And then at the end of the runway, we have the soul of a brave warrior. Now once we go upstairs, you are going to see a maybe not so smooth transition. I realized right before I started recording the voiceover that I again missed another item. A pair of cracked right eye orbs, but you will see me get them. It'll just be after an odd transition. But first, let's go talk to Tichi Gren. Leader of the Brotherhood oh, of Blood the, Covenant. Do you get the undead prison? All these. He really wants to make sure that you Look, know what you're getting into play. getting into you this covenant. More. You want to be trained? Oh, just. <laughs> now you are this crest. Get the no, Crest of Blood. Now, the Crest of Blood gives you an extra plus well, 50 bleed damage to any weapon that already has any natural bleed damage. If you infuse a weapon with bleed, you also get increased bleed, and I believe it's actually plus 60 at that point. Showing some of the wares that he has to offer. We are going to pick up the Red Sign Soapstone, in case we ever want to do invasions. And we're also going to pick up Firestorm and Fire Whip. We already have Great Combustion. We're not really in the habit of buying spells we already have, usually. Come back soon. And here's where that odd transition is going to take place. It 
is if you run along this edge carefully, going around these pillars, And make it to the end and you can get yourselves a pair of cracked red eye orbs it is good to stock up on these in case you do want to have them on hand because eventually Titchy will sell the cracked red eye orbs in New Game Plus but at 10,000 souls apiece which is a bit ludicrous if you ask me so now we transition back to Huntsman's Cops back where we left off With the undead purgatory behind us, we can now explore the cliffs and the caves of this upcoming area and find everything there is to see. Including, if we take a look in this hut to our right, there it is. There's a bonfire, but there's also someone sitting in the back. I'll get closer so you can take a look. And that is Creighton. So Creighton and Pate have an intertwined storyline that we will be fleshing out later on, but we will unlock Creighton in just a moment. Unfortunately, it is locked and we do need to pick up the key. Get a trio of throwing knives from that thief. Now, it's often a good idea while navigating these cliffs to lure enemies back around corners because there are a few archers that will take pot shots at you while you're defeating the other thieves. heal up and then he was kind enough to drop a thief dagger thief dagger is really not that great of a weapon if you are looking for a good dagger in this area I would stick to the bandits knife that way you can actually get that bleed damage get ourselves the rogue armor here and what we're doing is we're gonna take the left path we're going to go along and make sure we clear out all the thieves because there's an area on the left that we want to take out after these are dead. That way we don't have to worry about getting hit by any stray arrows. And a flame butterfly. And here, once you take care of this one, this is where the key is, the undead lockaway key. Now we'll continue on. There's one more archer up on a ledge who'll hop down when we get close. And with him out of the way, we only have one more enemy on this side, on this level, I should say, and that's the Dark Spirit Merciless Rowena. Not too difficult to take out, especially once you have the spells that we have. Now, Merciless Rowena can drop a Warlock Mask, the Cursed Bone Shield, and the Priestess Set. She didn't drop any of that for us, but she can. I promise. I read it somewhere. I've never seen her drop anything. But just like Dead Again, I'm sure all the comments below will tell me all about the times where you had her drop it over and over and over again. And it makes me sad and cry a little bit every time. So we backtrack until we find this path. Now up ahead there's going to be a clearing with some items in the middle and a crystal lizard. And the goal is for you to run in there and then you to be ambushed by three different thieves. However, if you have range attacks, if you have range attacks, if you have ranged attacks, you can take them out and make them come to you. It's that simple. So there's one, the other one's coming now. And the third one often will not follow these two aggro, so you want to actually go and approach him. He is an archer at first, so if you can just get him to hit the trees, you can get the drop on him. But before we even do that, Get our binoculars out because we want to snipe this crystal lizard or else he'll run off the cliff and you won't get him and you'll have to reset at a bonfire. So we'll just spell snipe. And there we go. Have him hit the tree, run up, take him out. And in the center we have 10 poison daggers, poison throwing knives, sorry. And then we have a titanite shard, a large shard, and a chunk all from that lizard. There's another item down here if we carefully drop down. And it's a trio of poison moss, which is going to be very good for Hunter's Valley coming up. 
You can do it with just healing items, but I prefer to have a lot of poison moss on hand before I go to Hunter's Valley if I plan on getting all the items. So we're going to run behind the waterfall. On the left hand side is the fog gate to the boss arena. We're not going to take the boss out just yet. We want to go through the caves because there are a few items in here as well. Now, similar to the Chariots fight, there are Necromancers that will keep these skeletons from dying completely until we kill the Necros. However, the nice thing is, if you knock down the skeletons and they have zero health, and you kill the Necromancer before he resurrects them, they will die. For example, you can now see the other skeletons have all yielded their souls. But the Necromancer did actually drop for us the Black Hollow Mage Rogue. Which is a pretty rare drop from these guys. However, it's also the starting equipment for the Sorcerer class, so it's not really that big a deal. And that item behind us is three Flame Butterflies. We'll unlock the shortcut, but then we're going to backtrack for just a quick moment. Because we did see an item on the edge of the cliff when we were on the left-hand side, and we're going to go pick that up by following this narrow path right here. Then we'll get combustion and three Titanite Shards. And then I get turned around. I always get lost in these caves, and I really have no excuse. Here we have a Necromancer straight ahead. We can actually get the drop on him. We can also manage to miss him twice. And that time he dropped an Amber Herb. No Lizard Staff for us. I've never had the Lizard Staff drop, unfortunately. I don't think it's all that useful, but it's neat looking. And I like Lizards. And I like Staffs, so why wouldn't I like both? And this fine gentleman will actually drop a falchion for us. And there's our amber herb. Screw you, cursed jar. Now that path straight ahead, we're not going to take it. That is simply a bridge to go to the other side of the cliff which we've already explored in earnest. And this fellow is kind enough to drop a human effigy, and then we grab the magic mace and another Titanite shard. So the caves are now clear. So Huntsman's Copse is now completely empty of enemies. And we can go and we can talk to Creighton, light this bonfire, and then we'll take out the boss. Now from here, Creighton will move to the Forked Roads in the Shaded Woods. And that's the next place you want to talk to him. Jesus. He is talking about how terrible Pate is. Yeah, we know. And then we can learn the fist bump gesture. But now, let's go back to the boss gate, and we'll take out the Skeleton Lords. So here's how this fight breaks down. You have three skeleton lords that come down from their thrones, and anytime you kill one, four smaller skeletons will spawn in their wake. You have ones that spawn the regular skeletons with the wooden shields, one that spawn the heavier skeletons that do some massive damage, and the last one will spawn the bone wheel skeletons that we saw in Dark Souls 1. Now the order that I like to take them out in is from you take out the right skeleton lord, so you can get the small skeletons and take them out. And then you take care of the one with the scythe, and that way he'll spawn the heavier skeleton warriors, which is still pretty easy to deal with. 
And lastly, you take out the caster, who will spawn the skeleton bone wheel warriors. Those ones you don't want to be fighting if there's anything else alive in the room. So here we have the second one dead, and we killed the one with the scythe. And you can, once they're about halfway up through the ground, you can start killing them. Which makes it a lot easier that you can kill most of them, if not all of them, before they're all up. Okay, that's four. Now we just need to take out the last lord and then deal with the bone wheel skeletons. I was trying to bait him into an attack and he, he would have nothing of it. Now the same with the last ones, we can start attacking these bone wheels as they're coming up, once they're about halfway. You don't want to get stun locked by these. And that's the Skeleton Lords. We get their soul as a reward, and now we can move on. We'll meet Cloanne, we'll light a bonfire. And in the next episode, or episodes, we will take a look at Harvest Valley. There's a lot of secrets in Harvest Valley. A lot of places that you can miss, a lot of areas that you can only access in very specific ways, including one wall that can only be destroyed by an enemy. And we'll see that in the next episode or two. Not sure why they added a ladder here. It's entirely useless. But before we end the episode, we are going to talk to Chloanne. We're going to exhaust her dialogue. We'll take a look at the things that she sells, as well as picking up a couple of spells ourselves. Did all that just rhyme? Bonfire Cetic, some Titanite shards, and Soul Appease and Dead Again, which we are going to pick up. Now, her inventory does change throughout the game, so anytime you defeat a boss, okay. you might want to check with Chloe Ann because she eventually does add chunks, she does add slabs, she does add the infusion stones as well. I suppose it's about time I move. But for now, let's head back to Majula and let's say goodbye the proper way. Alright, well that is going to do it for today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If you did, please let me know in the comments below and I will talk to you guys next time.